Hello, it's great to be with you again. And today I'd like to share with you about Shavuot Pentecost, from the law to faith. I want you to know that God is a covenant keeping God. He keeps his promises and he made a covenant with the nation of Israel. He has never broken that covenant or gone against it. But there is a new covenant that has come and that is that which reveals Jesus. And I just want to share with you some of the things that I've learned um, through looking and being Jewish uh, to becoming a believer in Jesus because Jesus came, he died and rose again. And because of that, everything is different now. Around this time of the year, Jewish people keep the feast of Shavuot, the word Shavuot literally means weeks. So it's a feast of weeks. It's a, a period of seven weeks times seven. And seven times seven, as we all know, is 49. So from Passover, the beginning of Passover, to Shavuot is a period of 49 days. And then on the 50th day, Shavuot comes. And that is basically a harvest festival. The barley harvest was taken around the time of Passover and it's the wheat harvest that now comes at Shavuot. And it's a wonderful, joyous holiday. Jewish people celebrate. They celebrate um, the harvest by eating uh, lots of things um, that are beautiful to behold but they particularly eat milk and uh, milky products, not the meat ones so much, although they can after a certain period of time, but particularly cheesecake. Um, so a friend of mine suggested, we should call this Cheesecake Sunday, or Ch Shavuot is a, a feast of uh, cheesecake and blintzes, which are like folded pancakes around cheese and other milky things, which are delicious. And it's a time of celebration and joy. For the Jewish people, we remember how God took us out of the land of Egypt. Why? Because he wanted us to worship him in a particular place. And after 50 days, we get there and um, we, are, we receive the law. God gave the law to Moses and Moses brought it to us and that's on the Mount of Sinai and no one was meant to go near the mountain while Moses was up there communing with God and he was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and then he came down and brought the Torah. Now the law has been central to Jewish people from that time. It's been something that is cherished, held in high regard and studied. And by the Torah, um, Jewish people mean the first five books of the Bible and also the teachings around them. That is good in one sense, but in another sense, because those teachings around the actual scripture are held in such a high regard, they can only really um, look at it and think of it in a certain way. They're not completely free to allow God to speak. And so the whole Jewish Bible, um, which shows the law, the Ten Commandments, and also the different writings and the teachings of the prophets are, are all part of the scripture, which we know and love. Um, but Jewish people, they read it, but they can't see the Messiah Jesus in it. Why is that? Because in, in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it says that every time they read it, it's like there is a vow covering their hearts. And we read in 2 Corinthians that it is in the Messiah Jesus that that vow is, is ripped away. So while the Jewish people study and study the Torah to get to know God, to try and, and please him, to try and follow him, they don't know the fullness of it like we do in the Messiah. So over the time of Shavuot, 
which is 50 days after Passover, not only do we um, eat lots of cheesy, milky things that are absolutely delicious, but also the Torah is studied more intently. The night before Shavuot, um, what happens is some people will stay all night, particularly the men, studying the Torah. Now, Shavuot is one of the three pilgrim festivals when all the Jewish men were meant to go before God um, when the temple was around, before the temple in Jerusalem. And the three pilgrim festivals are Pentecost, Shavuot, sorry, Passover, Shavuot and Sukkot. So that's the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of um, Pentecost. So you've got Pentecost first, no, so you've got Passover first, then Pentecost, then Tabernacles. And they're all wonderful times for the Jewish people to come before God. Jewish people will still travel to Jerusalem today to worship God there. And they go now to the, to the last remaining wall of the temple, the Wailing Wall or the Kotel. Um, this is really important. And we know that in the scriptures, the apostle Paul, Paul of Tarsus, he went back to Jerusalem for these Jewish festivals. Now, there is a correlation between the harvest festival of Shavuot and what we know as Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. Jewish people were meant to go and present their offerings in the temple. They included for each person um, two large loaves of wheat. And then also they would take with them different, um, different species of fruit that was particularly grown in the land. They would take wheat, they would take barley, they would take dates, pomegranates, grapes, figs and olives and they would be presented in the temple. But after the temple was destroyed, some of those things um, are not done in quite the same way. So the other thing that happened around the time of Pentecost was um, the law was given and Jewish people celebrate the giving of the law by, as I said, staying up all night, reading, reading scriptures, and they particularly like reading the book of Ruth, because Ruth, if you can think back, is a book about um, harvest, and uh, Ruth was allowed to glean, um, go around the corners of the field, and those corners were meant to be left for the poor. And we know how that ends up, because Ruth married, um, and she became the grandmother of King David. Why did God pour out his Holy Spirit at the Feast of Pentecost? The word Pentecost literally means 50. Why did God pour out his Spirit then? Because Jewish people had been longing for the Messiah to come. They study the law. They want to be close with God. But most of them were not aware when Jesus came, he fulfilled all the promises in the scripture. So Jesus died, rose again, and then ascended into heaven on the 40th day, 10 days before the festival of Shavuot or Pentecost, and said to the Jewish people, his disciples, wait until you are filled with power from on high. Now, the disciples waited, they were in an upper room, and then suddenly a mighty rushing wind came, and on their heads were tongues of fire, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And they rushed out, rushed out into the streets and began speaking and praising God in languages that were not their own. They were given a gift of being able to speak in the languages of the people around them. Now, Jewish people had gathered for this pilgrim festival from all over the known world. Some of them had made a very long trip 
And when they heard these men proclaiming God in their own language, they knew this was something peculiar. And Peter stood up and preached a sermon. And people heard and their hearts were quickened. And 3,000 people went, went and gave their lives to the Messiah Jesus. They believed, they repented, and they were baptised. And that was really the beginning of the church, the people of the Messiah. The majority of them were Jewish. Some of them would have been proselytes or people that were wanted to worship the one true and living God, but needed to um, go for a period of study and then become Jewish. But all of them came into this wonderful experience when they believed of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It was indeed a great miracle. And that, as Shavuot was the beginning of the Jewish people as a real nation with God giving them the Torah, which they faithfully kept. That Pentecost, the first after Jesus's death, resurrection, ascension, was the time when Jewish people first came to believe in Jesus. And then the amazing thing was that the gospel went forth to the nations, to the Gentiles, to people that weren't born Jewish, but came into a belief of the one true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now you have come in to this great knowledge of him, where God hasn't required you to work at it through the law. One of the things that the Jewish people feel is that somehow if they keep all the commandments they can be closer to God and that they can know him but we know that's not all that you need God didn't just want to give us his law on tablets of stone it says in the scriptures that he would write his law on our hearts and God indeed has written his law on our hearts because we have come into fellowship with him because of Jesus's death on the cross. He has set us free from the works of the law because Jesus took all the curses upon him that come from not keeping the law. I ask for Galatians 3 to be read to you, 1 to um, 1 to 13 and um, it says in verse um, 10 for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is everyone who does not continue all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ, Messiah, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Messiah Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the law was a tutor, a schoolmaster. It kept the Jewish nation on the right track. But we can't get completely right with God just by observing the law. That's why Jesus came and died, took all of our sins upon him, even became cursed, as it were, under the law. And he died and rose again to show that 
His death and resurrection made an atonement for our sins. And that's why we've been able to come into that place of having new life in him. If you haven't experienced that new life that Jesus brings, just come to him today. Ask him to be your Lord. For those of, of us that have indeed become born again, we can be sure that God has given his spirit. And maybe some of us feel a little bit dry, but we need to be being filled with the Holy Spirit. When it says in the Bible, be filled with the Holy Spirit, we are to keep on being filled with him. We are no longer to be in that position where we turn back and try and earn our salvation. We can't do that. But what we are to do is believe and trust that Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection has given us the ability to walk in the spirit, to walk in new life. If you're feeling a bit dry, let's just ask the Lord to fill us to fullness and rejoice in him.